Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lucky Buns. In today's video, I'm going to be going through how to complete the special research quest, A Search for Zerud. Now specifically, I've noticed that a lot of you have been struggling with the make five great throws in a row task. So I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks to hopefully help you get through that in a much easier way. And we're also going to be going over how good Zerud is going to be in Pokemon Go in both the raid and PVP metas. Now as always, before we go in and get started, if you guys do end up finding this video helpful and informative, please make sure to smash that like button down below. Helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that I'd like to mention in regards to the special research quest for Zerud is that you have to start it before October 10th. So basically you just have to log into Pokemon Go and that'll unlock the quest. And basically once you've done that, there's no time limit in terms of completing the quest. So let's go through the steps right now. So for step one, you're gonna have to catch seven different species of Pokemon, catch seven Pokemon, and then take three snapshots of a wild ground type Pokemon. So for the snapshots, you just go into the encounter screen and there's like a little picture icon on the top of the screen. Just click that, take a picture three times, and that's all you have to do. Now moving on over to step two, this is what I'm pretty sure most of you are struggling with right now. It's gonna be the make five great throws in a row. There was a method called the cancel throw method, which unfortunately was patched earlier this year. So we're gonna have to find a different alternative to actually getting these great throws in a row. So first of all, what I'm pretty sure most of you don't know is that when you go into a Pokemon encounter screen, the great throw range is automatically set. So pretty much what I would recommend doing before you're going for your great throws is enter the encounter screen and do not touch that Pokeball whatsoever. And then from there, you wanna wait until that Pokemon uses its attack animation. And during the attack animation, that is when you want to throw the Pokeball, essentially landing right as that circle reappears on that Pokemon. So essentially, if you do this correctly, you're gonna encounter the Pokemon, do not touch the Pokeball, wait for the attack animation to go through, throw the Pokeball mid animation so that the Pokeball is already going towards the Pokemon by the time it actually ends the animation, and this will allow you to actually hit it right on the Great Throw range automatically. Now of course that being said doesn't mean that your throw is going to hit the Great Throw range automatically, but the range should already have been set there. Now additionally you could also use the Circle Lock technique, which essentially is just holding down the Pokeball to set the Circle range, and then letting go, and then essentially it's the same thing as we just talked about, wait until the attack animation goes through, throw the Pokeball mid animation, and it lands as soon as that range reappears if you get the timing done correctly. Now with that being said though, every single Pokemon in game is going to have a different circle radius. Some Pokemon have really big circles and some Pokemon have really small circles. A good example of Pokemon with small circles are gonna be Caterpie or Pidgey. And a great example of a Pokemon with a bigger circle is gonna be a Pokemon like Tauros or Genesect. So I would definitely recommend trying to find Pokemon with bigger catch circles, but there's also another problem that kind of comes into place here. Is the Pokemon close to you or is it far away? So I know that a lot of you have actually really struggled with the curveball throws in Pokemon Go. So I'm going to be going over some things that kind of help me figure out how to determine if the Pokemon is further away or if it's closer to me and exactly where I should be throwing the Pokeball when I should be releasing and hopefully this should help you out. So for right-handed throwers, you want to spin the Pokeball counterclockwise and you want to get a really fast motion going for it. This will allow you to control how fast the Pokeball is going to spin towards the Pokemon. So if the Pokemon is a little bit closer to you, something like Caterpie for example, Example, you don't want to spin it super fast, you want to get a bit of a controlled throw before you go ahead and throw it towards it. For a Pokemon like Genesect, for example, right? That Pokemon is actually really far away. And basically, once you have a good momentum going for your throw, you want to throw it to the top of the screen on the right hand side rather than the middle. If you throw it to the middle, you're not actually going to reach Genesect because Genesect is actually further back. So you have to throw it a little bit higher up. And if you have a good momentum going for your throw when you're spinning the Pokeball, as I'm doing on screen, you're gonna see that I release it right as I get to that top right hand corner. And if you end up doing this correctly, you're gonna land right in the middle of the screen, right where the great throw range is supposed to be, or potentially even the excellent throw range, depending on what you're going for. Now with that being said though, I want you all to keep in mind that this will take some practice to get used to. Throwing a little bit closer to the screen is a little bit more tricky opposed to throwing further away. So in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to throw a Genesect because I already know the rotation that it's going to be going towards, right? Throwing into the top right corner is a little bit easier than kind of trying to time the throw and also controlling the throw when the Pokemon is really close to you. So I definitely do recommend going back and watching my examples over again. Hopefully I've added enough detail that you guys can see when exactly I'm releasing, how exactly I'm throwing, and how far away I'm throwing at the Pokemon or even how close I'm throwing at the Pokemon. 
Pokemon. Anyways though, the main takeaways here that I would like to sum up is that you want to make sure that you find a Pokemon with a bigger radius, you want to try to utilize the automatic great throw range as soon as you open up the Pokemon encounter screen, for example just don't touch the Pokeball, wait until the attack animation starts, and then throw the Pokeball at that Pokemon, and hopefully you throw it towards the middle of the screen. If you do, you'll land the great throw, and if not, you can always use a circle lock technique as well. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more direction in terms of getting the five great throws in a row. I know it can be a very frustrating task, and because the cancel throw method did get patched, it's just made this whole entire process so much more difficult, but trust me, just find a Pokemon with a bigger catch circle, something like Genesect, and you'll be fine. So with that being said, let's go through the rest of the steps for the quest, and then we'll talk about how good Zarude is going to be in Pokemon Go. So finishing up step two, after the five great throws in a row, you also have to catch 10 bug type Pokemon, and then take three snapshots of wild bug type Pokemon. For step three, you gotta use 20 berries to help catch Pokemon, fairly simple. And then you gotta catch 30 grass type or bug type Pokemon, and uh, then you also have to take three snapshots of wild grass type Pokemon. Step four is gonna be to defeat six Team Go Rocket Grunts, fairly simple, either through the balloons or through the actual Pokestops. You're also gonna have to catch 15 Pokemon with the weather boost, and then take three snapshots of wild flying type Pokemon. And that is essentially it. After that, the final step is going to be to catch Sarud, and it's all just free claim rewards for XP, so yeah, pretty nice. So overall, this quest really isn't too difficult, and in my opinion, the hardest part of it is just getting those five great throws in a row, so hopefully this video has helped you out with that. So with the special research out of the way, though, let's move on over to our next aspect of this video. How good is Zarude in Pokemon Go? Now the base stats for Zarude are actually looking really nice, they're really spread out evenly, so this is actually fantastic. Its attack stat is going to be 242, defense stat is going to be 215, and its stamina stat or HP stat is going to be 233. This makes Zarude a very well-rounded Pokemon. The CP range for Zarude at level 40 in terms of a hundo is going to be 38-33, and then if you get it to level 50 it's going to be 43-34. The only real way to actually get the extra large candy is to use rare candy, and then convert that candy into extra large candy, which is super bad. Or you could also walk Zarud, which would be extremely time consuming to get the 296 extra large candy it requires to power it up to level 50, so... Level 40 Zarud is going to be pretty much the max for most of you, unless you're cheating in game. So Zarud is going to be a dark type and a grass type Pokemon. Honestly, it is much more utilized as a grass type Pokemon in the raid meta. Zarud is actually the number three overall grass type in the meta right now, including Megas. And then if you don't include the Megas, Zarud is actually the number one grass type in the game. So yeah, it's actually really, really good. So with Zarud basically being in the number one slash number three spot in the grass type meta, this definitely makes it a very viable Pokemon to power up in the future if you do want to use it in raid battles. If we take a look at Zarud in the dark type meta, it actually falls below Yveltal and Hydreigon. So quite honestly, it's not the best. Like you definitely have much better options out there, especially since Darkrai is gonna be coming back into rotation soon. Darkrai is a much better dark type attacker. So really Zarud should just be used for the grass type meta. With that being covered though, let's move on over to the PVP aspect of the game. So there's three main leagues that Zarud is going to perform in. The Ultra League Open, the Master League Open, which is gonna be level 50 Master League, and then Master League Classic, which is gonna be level 40 Master League. Like I previously mentioned, unless you're cheating in game, there's no way to pretty much get a Zarud at level 50. So let's go ahead and start off with Zarud in the Ultra League. So for the moveset, you're gonna to wanna to have Vine Whip plus Dark Pulse and Power Whip. Zarud actually ran ranks number 149, which isn't super crazy, but some of the key wins that Zarud will get are going to be against Giratina Altered Form, Cresselia, and Swampert which are three of the most common Pokemon you'll see in the Open Ultra League meta. Now this actually seems great on paper, and I was super hyped about it initially, until I saw Ryan from Swagtip's video, where he went over the comparison to Extra Large Shiftry, which is also a Dark type and Grass type Pokemon. So Extra Large Shiftry actually has pretty much the same coverage, but it has a much better move pool. So if we actually compare Shiftry to Zarude, we can see that it actually has a much better win condition for Giratina Altered Form, Swampert, Cresselia, Poliwrath, basically all of the the key wins that Zarud would normally get, Shiftry basically does it better in its extra large form. With that being said though, Zarud definitely does have some viability in the Master League Classic form. Um, we're not going to go over the Master League Open just because level 50 Zarud is pretty much impossible. Some of the key wins that Zarud is going to get in the Master League Classic is going to be against Giratina Origin form, Giratina Altered form, Kyogre, Groudon, and Mewtwo. And then some of the key losses are going to be from Dialga, Togekiss, Melmetal, Dragonite, and Yveltal. Now with that being said though, we only get one Zarud 
Root in game as of right now because it is a mythical Pokemon, so depending on your IV spread, you may or may not want to run it for either the Ultra League or for the Master League Classic. I feel like the majority of you will want to run it for the Master League Classic form though, but given that it is very resource heavy, I mean, you could honestly go either way. You could even decide not to use it for uh, Master League at all and you can just use it for the raid meta. The choice is up to you. But the nice benefit that I really like about Zarud in both of the metas is that if you choose to use it for the Master League Classic form, you're basically getting the number one grass type attacker in the game already built into what you're going to use it for in Master League Classic anyways, so it's kind of a win-win scenario. That being said though, if you are curious about more Pokemon that you want to consider powering up in-game, I definitely recommend checking out this video right here. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.